Michael, I, I, I loved your, um, the, the, the image of, of Apollo. I had not known that the, the beginning of the Hippocratic Oath, um, was, uh, I, swear by, was, I swear by Apollo, but certainly the ambition to first do no harm is, is uh, an important one. I thought when you, were, when you were speaking of that poem by Rilke the, on the archaic bust of uh, Apollo, it said, uh, you know, you must change your life. And I think that uh, in, in some sense, the, the kind of contemplation, the, the, the attractiveness of, of works of art, the reason that we value them is precisely for that revelatory uh, moment. And I just wondered if you, uh, you know, you talked about our, the, the corrosive attitude and activities of this progressive, I think you, progressive dismantling of, of the uh, museums. I wondered if you, had anything more to say about that? Mm. Well, that's the, the biggest question of all. The promotion of virtue, and I, it's, it's bigger than the museum. Governments used to exist as instruments of virtue, that there are good things that, that must be commemorated. And as government has gotten increasingly involved in things like state- Bathrooms? Ba bathrooms, yeah. Thinking, uh, state lotteries, I'm thinking that, that when government gets into the vice business, it's no longer, there, there, there is not a, a common understanding that these institutions are, are instruments of civilization that do something good. So there at the Apollo Belvedere, a, a moment for quiet, transcendent contemplation of a single thing. Khan's buildings permit that, but our society doesn't encourage it. So that's where we are. Uh, very good. I, um, uh, George, I. It was very happy that you could participate in this um, uh, discussion today because uh, I knew that a lot of the conversation would be of a uh, mournful, a mournful equality. And I wanted to be sure that we had uh, one conspicuous success story. I remember uh, when I think when I met you, when we, uh, James and I toured the, 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 the newly renovated um, British Art Center, I was really struck by uh, what a meticulous job you've done, and it really was a tremendous uh, success story. So um, we're delighted that you, that you could, could join us. Um, and I think you, both you and Philippe, uh, 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 alighted on, uh, I guess, one of the paradoxes of, of our panel today, which is uh, the, the impermanence of permanence. Of, of course, we, we are interested in museums because they have this curatorial role, they, um, th they uh, seek to make, <clears throat> perhaps permanence is the wrong word, but to retard the inevitable entropy uh, that, that attends to all human c uh, c constructions. It's true even of art, even of the, uh, the, the paintings, the sculptures. Who knows what, what can happen? Uh, they, they could be bombed, they could be, uh, in, you know, transferred inexpertly to, uh, to, to a canvas. They, they could be burned. Um, but b both of you <coughs> seem to stress this, uh, this theme of the, the impermanence of the permanent. And, uh, and Philippe, you, you ended by uh, talking about uh, reverence, love, a pr kind of probing interest. And I wonder if both of you wanted to say a word or two more about this uh, attempt, which I think is integral to the museum, of retarding the inevitable entropy that attends uh, to all of our creations. Well, I, I, I think you've given <coughs> to any, if, if anybody is in a PR department of a museum, I think they should immediately take notes. And I think the new uh, messages should be hurry to the museum while the works of art have not totally disintegrated right. because time is short. So it, it's a whole new line. I will have to say, uh, among all of the nostalgia and melancholy, um, and uh, all of the things that are happening in the museum that we heard today and we've all uh, observed uh, that are regrettable, um, I think we shouldn't forget that on the whole, uh, people, the public audiences, uh, I have a great deal of respect for them, and I think the people who really seek out uh, fine things, good things, uh, even enduring things, find them. 
uh, through all of uh, the, the superfluous uh, uh, material that is thrown into museum through amenities and dancing in the galleries and so forth. The galleries are still there. The labels are still in, 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 in fine shape and, and, and good. And uh, mostly anybody who seeks uh, the right in museums will find it. And even those uh, who come simply for the bucket list will encounter very professional installations, even at the Walker Art Center. So not, you can almost, in a sense, and I'm there, I'm taking a contrarian point of view, dismiss uh, all of this frou-frou that is being added for all of the wrong reasons these days, that will be also a passing thing. And I think the pendulum will swing, uh, but the museums, uh, as the prime repository, will stay behind. So I'm fairly confident in the future. It's, it's, it's when the Met and the Boston Museum start to dismantle the galleries altogether that we have to worry. But they haven't done that in the process. George? Uh, you know, to your question, I would say it was, it was relevant mm -hmm. to, for me to gain an insider's perspective on, on one museum, but I think probably all museums, uh, you know, in, insofar as the energy, the, the imagination, the expense that's, that's um, given over to the protection of artwork. It's extraordinary. And I think, I, I think notwithstanding, you know, the horrifying examples that you showed, uh, be they acts of violence or acts of negligence, um, I find myself enormously impressed with uh, the state of the art of art preservation itself. And so, um, you know, it's simply, it's simply absolute quality of permanence uh, that I think is ultimately something that we probably have to um, give up. But, but again, the, the, the notion of continuity, I've heard many people speak today uh, uh, regretting what I think are, are more dramatic ruptures. Uh, and I, I completely agree with that. I, I think the museums, uh, role as protector of artwork is to foster a continuity which is so nourishing to human life. Uh, I'm going to pose a devil's advocate question. Most of the discussions today seem to be largely characterized by nostalgia for the way things used to be when those of us of a certain age first began visiting museums, and I have that nostalgia too. But that was then and this is now. So my, my question is, uh, have there been any changes to increase visitor engagement and to attract larger audiences and more diverse audiences that you approve of or that you would recommend? Uh, one thing that I've heard a couple times this morning was uh, referenced to uh, exhibition material on Alexander Hamilton, which, um, which I'm dying to get down to the New York Public Library to see. But I, 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 I have to believe that that arises out of a, a, a brilliant, very popular uh, piece of, of theatrical art, you know, the Hamilton, the play that probably we've all seen, uh, in which, which is suggesting to me that there is a, a kind of a backflow of very popular culture into uh, other cultures. And I, I find that to be actually very encouraging. Well, I'll, I'll kind of keep up the diet of gloominess myself, but <laughs> Philippe, perhaps you'd like to. <clears throat> well, I, I think it all lies in accessibility. Uh, I, I, I'm, I don't really believe uh, that one should bludgeon people into doing things they don't want to do or are indifferent to, uh, but it is the role of the institution to be as accessible as possible, accessible both physically and intellectually in the way the material is uh, presented. Um, inevitably, I think we have to be realistic, uh, as, as I was quoted early on by the first speaker, by you, I think, um, art is not fun, and I think to represent it as such, uh, as an alternative uh, to Madison Square Garden, it doesn't do anybody any good. The person will be uh, disappointed at looking at a Poussin and not be amused, um, uh, or those who will be uh, crowded out of it. But from time immemorial, art has always been um, a, a commodity, to use that word, uh, that is, in a sense, reserved to those with a certain amount of preparation and disposition uh, to have it. In, in all of the uh, history of, of museums, uh, one reads in the 18th and early 19th century of the creation of museums open to the public. What was the public? The public was fellow prints, the public was uh, educated people and generally artists. 
Uh, does that mean that in the 18th century they were restrictive? Not at all. Because 90% of the rest of the people were illiterate. And there would have been no reason for a trigger for them to walk into the Louvre. Right. Uh, so gradually we've come upon um, a population that mostly around the world has become literate and uh, more educational materials are made available. And um, I think what is, what is more alarming is the, the bucket list. Uh, uh, that's the, the great change is the people who visit, let's say, the Louvre, because that's a prototypical example of the wrong kind of visitation. <coughs> they simply visit the Louvre the, the way they visit, the, uh, take the bateau mouche or go mm. to the catacombs. You check off the Louvre. They have no particular interest in art, except maybe the slaves of Michelangelo because of the name, or, or Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Uh, and those people, in fact, the, 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 these, the, this enormous global uh, tourism actually is, is what turns off a large number of people who would, who would wish to uh, uh, use that word, but I don't particularly like this business of engaging with the art and these departments created in museums about the engagement with art. I, I'm not quite sure what that means, but um, I think being totally accessible now, I do want to say one thing, because Tom Hoving was, was taken a little bit, in my view, a little too much uh, uh, as the villain of the piece. Tom Hoving is the one who transformed the exiguous steps of the Met. They were so narrow and forbidding and created that, that those wonderful stairs, similar to the ones that, uh, in, in Brooklyn before that was ruined, um, uh, to, be, to be welcoming. So the sense, certainly, of being welcoming uh, one cannot but defend, um, and uh, the rest of it will sift out um, uh, in a natural process. Mm -hmm. You know, one, one thing, uh, we'll, 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 we need to uh, end now, but um, that the new criterion has quoted sort of ad nauseum, I think perhaps from its very first issue, is Matthew Arnold's famous uh, admonition that we should uh, disseminate the best that has been thought and said and one could add painted and sculpted and so on in the world as broadly as possible. And, and I agree with that. But one has to, I think, in order to make sense of that, stress the adjective. It has to be the best. You don't water it down. You don't turn it into entertainment. You don't want an entertaining version of Hamlet. You want the real thing. Uh, you, you, you want... Um, you know, the real painting of a dance to the music of time, not some fake uh, Poussin. So um, with that uplifting uh, thought, we will break now for lunch. I think we, we, we go out into the courtyard, is that correct, James? And then we will reassemble here um, for Marco Grassi, a few words from, uh, from Edward Sudzinski, and a uh, uh, delightful feedback. Thank you very much.